Hello, my name is Russell Singer with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video will demonstrate how to configure SIP and H323 Dual Connect services for the RadVision Elite 5000 Series MCU. One of the primary uses for this configuration is to enable the RadVision Elite 5000 Series MCU to handle both SIP and H323 calls coming from the Avaya Aura environment. We're going to start off by configuring the MCU to handle both SIP and H323 calls. So what I'll do first is log into the web interface of my MCU. Now as you can see, the status of both the H323 gatekeeper and the SIP server on this status map here, on the main page that you see when you enter the MCU web interface, both show disconnected. And that's simply because these are not administered currently. So in order to begin the administration, we're going to click on the Configuration tab. And then from here, we're going to click on the Protocols tab. Now this MCU is already uh, basically configured. I have it set up with an IP address. I have the NTP server configured, those types of things. So really all that's left to do at this point is configure the H323 and SIP protocols. So we'll click on the Protocol tab there. Now from here, you can see that there are really three fields we need to worry about primarily. Uh, the first is for the H323 gatekeeper. And what we're going to do is enter the IP address of our RadVision H323 gatekeeper. Uh, sometimes that's the same IP address as the iView management suite, if you have the gatekeeper co-installed with the management suite on the same server. Uh, but it can also be installed on a separate server. So if you're not sure what that IP address is, contact the person who installed your RadVision iView Management Suite and Gatekeeper. The Gatekeeper port in this case will leave it as the default, which is 1719. That's a fairly typical port used by H323. Then we'll go ahead and enable the SIP protocol if it's not already enabled by checking the box there on the left. In my case, it was already enabled. This will allow us to enter the data in the fields below, starting with the default SIP domain. The default SIP domain is not necessarily the same domain as your computer domain, but it may be. So if you're not sure again what that is, contact the person who installed your iView management suite or the Aura environment too. This SIP domain does need to match what's configured in the Aura environment. The next section there is the SIP server. Now by default, the locate automatically box is checked or selected. Uh, we need to change that. We're going to specify a specific SIP server, and, our, and in our case, what we're doing is we're uh, configuring our MCU to connect both H323 and SIP to the iView Management Suite and the ECS Gatekeeper. So those are both RadVision components. And so we're going to specify the IP address of our RadVision iView Management Suite and Gatekeeper here as well. So these two IP addresses will match. The port will leave as default, which is 5060, and that's a TCP port, which is unencrypted traffic for signaling. Now, if you would like to configure TLS here, you can do that. The next section there we actually do want to ignore, that's the use registrar uh, section of the configuration here. So we do not want to register the MCU as a SIP user to any uh, SIP registrar. We're just going to leave that unchecked and unselected. And then we'll go down to the bottom of the screen there and we'll click Apply. Now this MCU was already administered on my RadVision iView Management Suite as an MCU resource. So when we go back to the status screen here, you'll notice that the Gatekeeper section now shows green. The SIP, SIP server still shows red as though it's disconnected, but that's actually normal when you're not registering your MCU. So we're just configuring the MCU to receive SIP calls from the iView management suite. We're not really configuring it to dial out using SIP. So that is a normal state that you will see on the RadVision uh, MCU status page, at least for this version, the 7.7 .7 version of the MCU. But now what we're going to do is go to our RadVision iView management suite and just look at the configuration of how of the MCU there. So we'll open up our iView communication manager web page here. 
and you would want to log in with whatever login you created when this suite was installed. This is separate from the MCU login. Now once at the meeting monitoring screen, you'll want to select the resource management icon that's on the left side of the admin menu there. Then you want to select the tab that says MCU. And again, because we don't have an MCU configured here yet, we're going to go ahead and add one. And here we'll just give it a general name, something that will help us to identify it. The management IP address is the same IP address that we used to connect to the MCU. Typically, there's only one IP address associated with that. Uh, but there may be cases where there's more than one. So this is the IP address, again, that points to the web interface for the MCU. The model there is already chosen for us, but make sure that it is a 7.x MCU, the software version that's selected there. Now you'll notice the checkbox there, MCU operates in SIP mode only. I know it's tempting to check that box, but in this case, you actually do not want to do that. You're simply configuring the MCU as an H323 element here. So while the MCU can receive calls from a SIP network or a SIP endpoint, it does not place calls using SIP. It places calls using H323. So the next thing we'll do here is just specify the login name and password for the MCU web interface so that this uh, the iView management can, suite can log into it and manage it. And once we do that and select OK, Almost instantaneously, we can see that the MCU is added to the, the list there. And the status there shows online for us, which means that the H323 component in the MCU is registered with the H323 component in iView. And that's all you need to do to configure H323 and SIP dual connect on your Rad Vision 5000 Series Elite MCU. Thank you for your time today. We welcome your comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.